Balancing rights, that is the topic of tonight's byline. Look, no one supports drunk driving, no one that I know anyway. And attempts to deal with the issue have been largely successful over the years. So why then are we seeing mothers against drunk driving teaming up with the NDP to, to try and push for new legislation that further erodes civil liberties in Canada? Under a proposal put forward in an NDP private member's bill today, the police would not need a reason or even reasonable grounds to force you to submit to a breathalyzer. From the news release, Bill C-556, introduced by NDP MP Tariq Brahmi, would amend the criminal code to allow police officers to perform systematic random breathalyzer testing regardless of whether or not the driver shows signs of impairment. You could be a teetotaler that just left the house to go for coffee or pick up a few things at the grocery store. Doesn't matter. You will submit to an invasive test or be prosecuted as if you are a drunk driver. Currently, police need reasonable grounds to ask you to submit. They need to be able to show in court they had a reason for asking you. Well, not that they just dislike redheads. This is the equivalent of warrantless searches in my books, but the progressive left-wing NDP, well, they want to show they're tough on crime regardless of what it does to civil liberties. And uh, I have uh, consulted with uh, rep reputable uh, legal experts like, for example, Peter Hogg or uh, Professor uh, Robert Solomon. And uh, they, are, they, they have confirmed that the provision of this bill are compliant with the Canadian uh, Charter of uh, Rights and, and Freedoms. So much for protection against unreasonable search and seizure. Mothers Against Drunk Driving, the group that garnered so much goodwill through their initial campaign against drunk driving, well, they basically say, if you don't have anything to hide, then don't worry. Matt believes that driving is, a, is not, a, it's not a right, it's a privilege. And we have the right to be, have ourselves, our families, our children protected. And so certainly some minor inconvenience in terms of this testing. Really? Is that what we've come to in this country? The police can do what they will. And hey, as long as you're not doing anything wrong, don't worry about it. Just let the cop do what they will. I understand that we're talking about drunk driving and that it is an emotional issue for a lot of people. I'm not defending the idea that people should drink and drive, but we can't accept this invasion into our privacy, into our basic rights. We don't allow police to bust into the homes of murderers without a warrant. We don't even allow cops to take DNA samples of suspected murderers at will. Why would we allow this? This move will treat every Canadian as guilty until proven innocent. I want to show you the real statistics on drunk driving because I don't think we can trust MAD on this issue. Not on this front. They claim that in 2009 there were 1,052 deaths from impaired driving. I'm not so sure because Statistics Canada, well, they report that in 2011 there were just 121 deaths from impaired drivers. Here's what the Stats Can News release says. Police reported 121 incidents of impaired driving causing death in 2011, a rate of 0 0.35 per 100,000 population. The rate of impaired driving causing death dropped 29% in 2011, reaching the lowest point in over 25 years. Now, I asked for 2009 numbers from StatsCan so I could compare apples to apples. They didn't get back to me in time. Hopefully we will get those numbers. But let me point this out to you. Don't you think that if the number of deaths caused by impaired driving were just at roughly 10% of what they were two years earlier, Stats Canada might point that out? So why the difference? Well, it turns out that MAD, Mothers Against Drunk Driving, well, they use different data gathered from several sources. They don't rely on police reports or Stats Canada. In fact, in their explanatory, explanatory note, they say this, Canadian research indicates that the police frequently fail to detect or otherwise report the presence of alcohol in crashes in which there is no BAC, that's blood alcohol content, evidence. If there's no evidence of blood alcohol, why would they report it? My feeling is that MAD, as an advocacy group, however well-intentioned, is using a methodology that helps inflate their numbers to help their cause. StatsCan is clear. Drunk driving is on the de decrease. It has been for years. They say the impaired driving rate generally declined from the mid-1980s, that's when MAD really got going, to 2006 when it reached its lowest point in over 25 years at 234 incidents of drunk driving per 100,000 people. In 2011, the Canadian average across all provinces, it had bumped back up a bit to 262 incidents per 100,000. But look at this graph from Stats Canada. 
it shows that we used to have nearly, well, more than double that, nearly 600 incidents per 100,000 people. Now it's been in that mid-200 range for some time. It's been cutting more than half. Can we do more to fight drunk driving? Yes, absolutely. We could get tougher on repeat offenders, including those people that will drive even after having their licenses taken away. What we should not do is treat every Canadian like a criminal until they can prove themselves innocent. And that's the byline. My bill is intended to save lives and prevent injuries. As you know, too many Canadian families have been tragically, tragically affected by drinking and driving. Currently, some drunk drivers make the decision to drive anyway. I always love how anything can be sold as long as you wrap it up in safety and for the children. Simon Kent is normally on this program agreeing with me. Tonight we disagree, Simon, but not on the point of, of eliminating drunk driving, just how to do it. Uh, what, I oppose this on civil liberty grounds. Why do you support it? I support it on the purely empirical grounds of evidence that where this has been brought in, and, and I will reference Australia, where I grew up in the early 1980s, in some of the states where it was brought in, deaths on our roads that were caused in Australia by drunk driving dropped by over a third. Um, I hear your argument. I know your argument, what you're saying about the civil liberties side. That is important. But the argument in Australia was very vigorously debated. But in the end, people came down on that counterbalancing right to be able to get in their car, drive down the street, go about their business without being hit and killed by someone behind the wheel who is drunk. Well, that's why we have uh, strict penalties for those that have. And as, as we showed you with the Stats Canada graph, we used to have 600 uh, incidents per 100,000. I remember when I was a kid, late 70s, mm. early 80s, mm. everybody drove drunk. And I was a kid then. I was mm. just the passenger. Adults didn't think twice about it. You just mm. get in the car, you've had several beers, you've had lots to drink, get in the car and drive anyway. But we've gone from under six, just under 600 uh, per 100,000 to under 300. It has been cut in more than half, which is a, a great accomplishment. A lot of people might argue even that figure of 262 per uh, core sample of 100,000 is 262 uh, too many because I guess the aim is to have nobody die on our roads, no one killed on our roads by a drunk driver. I, I just think it's really interesting. In Australia, it's not so much the doing. Uh, roadblocks are a part of, fundamental part of Australian life. I know that will probably put the hair up in the back of your neck, but uh, police roadblocks and they pull over whole sections of the road, whole sections of the freeway, one after the other, every single car, every driver is but, tested. And, and we have that, mm. but here's the difference. Yep. The police approach you, they ask you questions, mm. they observe your behavior, and it must be something in your behavior or your answers that says you need to have a breathalyzer test. Totally opposite in Australia. They will just uh, choose cars, and they'll do it at 8 o'clock in the morning outside some business centres. Australians accept it. Australians are as bulky as Canadians when it comes to authority, and in some ways even more so. But I, I think the, the, the balancing argument in the end came down on the right of people to go about their business and get in their car on the understanding that the, the chances are lessened of them being hit by a drunk driver if random breath testing exists. And uh, I, I, I can see your argument, but again, I look at the statistics, Brian. I look at how the uh, figures dropped in Australia. Do you think that we could, uh, even if we brought this in, yep. we're at 121 deaths from drunk driving per year in Canada. Per 100, and Compared 000? to other forms of, of death in Canada... Uh, that is incredibly low. Mm. Do you think that we could ever actually get to zero? Because in my experience, as someone that's covered courts, yep. the worst offenders are the yep. people that have already had the book thrown at them. Mm. They are alcoholics who are going to get behind the wheel and get to the bar no matter what. The does, does treating you like a criminal mm. stop them? They're the recidivists. They're the repeat offenders, and they're the bane of our legal system. Um, yeah, I, I just think it's important that the, the, the message is there on our roads that do not get in your car when you're drunk, do not even assume to go near your car. You can't legislate against stupidity in the end. You can't bring in laws that say you can't be stupid, you can't be dumb. You, you, you uh, will but, but legislate to out of the car. But here's where I think this is going, is that mm. you look at what the provinces have been doing, uh, and the, mm. the, the criminal rate is 0 0.08. You blow above 0 0.08 mm. and you're guilty under the criminal code. But the provinces have brought in administrative penalties. Sometimes you lose your car and your license for three days for blowing in the warning area. It's uh, so you haven't broken the criminal law. You are still being punished 
in a rather severe way, losing your car, depending on where you live for three days, is a stiff punishment. This is the new temperance movement, and I, I think it's about more than making the road safe. I think it is, it is like the temperance movement of the 1920s to say alcohol is not acceptable in society at all. I, I don't see that. I see that as an example of comparative morality. I think what they're saying is what is not acceptable is people getting behind the wheel drunk. If these people are repeat offenders, take their car away from them for three days, at least might diminish the opportunity. That's not a first offence. That's not repeat well, offender. Offense, That's the first time you blow I'll, in the warning zone. I'd say 0.08 is very generous in Australia. Across the board in every state and territory, it's 0.05. Uh, that's how low it is. And, and at 0.05, as a judge by... A policeman on the side of the road, he can stop anyone he likes. They have whole buses where everyone's put into the bus and taken to the local police station. And if they refuse to give a blood test, uh, sorry, a breath test, they can take a blood test. I mean, the Aussies take it very seriously. And this is a vigorous debate. And it's a debate that a civilised society like Canada has to have. Right, well. I, tend to, I tend to defer on the side of, of wanting to be safe enough to get in my car. And, and, and God knows I've never been convicted for drunk driving. I've been tested a lot of times, but never convicted or even charged. All right. Well, we'll uh, let that debate continue okay. with the audience now. Simon, good talking to you as always.